طريق القدس يمر بالقلمون وبالزبداني وبحمص طريق فلسطين لا ما بتمر بالزبداني ودمشق Watching the English newscast on Future Television, I'm Yumna Nelfat, and these are today's top stories. Officials still trying to secure a deal with a private company to remove the mounds of waste covering Beirut, according to Mayor Bilal Hamad. Turkish military carries out a second wave of strikes against targets controlled by ISIS in Syria and embarks on a new air campaign to bombard camps of Kurdish militants in northern Iraq. And U.S. President Barack Obama tells African entrepreneurs in Kenya they could help encounter violent ideologies and drive growth in Africa. Again, a very hot summer day here in Beirut. Officials are still trying to secure a deal with a private company to remove the mounts of garbage covering Beirut, according to Mayor Bilal Hamad. In a telephone call this morning, with the Daily Star, Hamad said the Beirut Municipal Board's decision to contract a private company to search for new locations to bury all the tons of garbage has been accumulating across the city over the past week, still needs the approval of the capital's governor. The governor, Ziyad Shbib, returned from a trip to Paris yesterday, according to Hamad, and he expressed hope that his arrival would expedite a solution to the crisis within the next 24 hours. Hamad has proposed a solution to the week-long crisis, whereby the government would ask Suklin to maintain all its activities except create and manage the new landfills, which would be the task of the new contractor. During the call, he also explains that his suggestion implies that Suklin would still be responsible for collecting, sorting and treating waste until the Environment Ministry selects new companies to replace it. And so, progressive Socialist Party leader Wali Jamblat is ruling out the possibility of reopening the controversial Naame landfill as Beirut and Mount Lebanon remain buried under the piles of waste you are seeing on our screens with no solution to the week-old garbage crisis in sight. The 17-year-old landfill's gates were permanently shut on July 17th with activists blocking its entrances to force the government to abide by the closure deadline. The landfill was meant to be a temporary solution to a 1997 crisis that successive governments kept postponing its closure, infuriating local residents wary of the health and risks that it posed. Now, Jamblad said no official has contacted him to request a reopening of the facility, but he suggested that Burj Hamoud and Khalde, two areas to the north and south of Beirut, respectively, could host landfills to contain the capital's waste. Environment Minister Mohamed Mashnu announced on Tuesday that no company showed interest in submitting an offer to succeed to clean and managing Beirut's waste, and as a result, the minister extended the submission deadline by two weeks. Turkish military carried out a second wave of strikes against targets controlled by ISIS jihadists in Syria and embarked on a new air campaign to bombard camps of Kurdish militants in northern Iraq. The two-pronged operation against ISIS and militants from the Kurdistan Workers' Party, known as the PKK, who are themselves bitterly opposed, came after a week of deadly violence in Turkey, where the authorities blamed on the organizations. The Turkish jets all returned safely to their base in the southeastern city of Diyarbakir early this morning after the latest raid, according to the Anatolia News Agency. Syrian President Bashar Assad issued a decree announcing a general amnesty for military deserters who violate the country's compulsory military conscription law, according to state television. The decree, which was announced on state television, said the law would lift legal penalties against thousands of army deserters apply to those outside and inside Syria. The Syrian army, one of the region's largest, has been overstretched by a four-year-long insurgency where it is battling on several major fronts, Islamist rebels and ultra-hardline militants who have seized large parts of Syrian territory. So as the Syrian crisis moves towards its fifth year, an aid agency is funding and drying up. An increasing number of Syrian refugees are choosing to return home. Syrians continue to flee airstrikes and shelling in the war-torn country at a rate of several thousands per day, but many are now caught in an impossible situation in Jordan and are choosing to go back to Syria 
even if it is a nightmare. Although refugees fleeing Syria outnumber those going back, aid groups and camp officials say they see a growing trend of returnees. The dangers that await them inside Syria are for sure, but the risks begin even before they cross the border. A Jordanian officer said that sometimes buses are targeted en route by factions fighting inside the very towns of buses that are heading for Syria. Coming up next, Jimmy Fallon and YouTube perform together at Madison Square Garden. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching the 420 o'clock news here on Future Television. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry says that if the U.S. Congress disapproves of the Iranian nuclear deal, it will undermine President Barack Obama's administration's ability to act throughout the world. Kerry defended the nuclear deal the U.S. and five other world powers negotiated with Iran at the Council on Foreign Relations in New York, saying that the deal struck last week in Vienna is the only alternative to military action and must be tested if diplomacy is to succeed. Uh, we're gaining a, a safety and security, I believe, for Israel and the region that no alternative presents. To uh, more, we talked about the long term. Are you prepared? The fact is that uh, if we don't accept this agreement, if we don't keep with this agreement and put it to the test, year 15 or year 20 comes tomorrow. Literally. Because Iran already has enough nuclear material for 10 to 12 bombs. So, folks, everybody's missing this. This is not a question of what happens in 15 years or 20 years. This is a question of what happens now, tomorrow, if you don't accept this deal. The, about what would be tolerable and... And what happens is, if the United States Congress unilaterally walks away from this arrangement that we have reached, we go right back to square one where we were with no alternative. Iran is enriching, we have no inspections, we have no ability to know what they're doing, we don't roll back their program, we're right back where we were, and we are going to head to conflict. Oh, ab absolutely. Of course it does. I mean, it's a repudiation of President Obama's uh, initiative and a statement that when the executive department negotiates doesn't mean anything anymore because we have 535 secretaries of state if we're not happy we can go to the security council and we alone can force a vote on the snapping back of those sanctions u.s president barack obama told african entrepreneurs in nairobi they could help counter violent ideologies and drive growth in africa in his address to a global entrepreneurship summit in kenya his father's homeland and the biggest economy in east africa at the beginning of the first presidential visit to Kenya. The annual U.S.-sponsored conference was being held for the first time in sub-Saharan Africa at a U.N. compound in Nairobi. Obama is keen to boost business ties with Africa, where China overtook the U.S. as the continent's biggest trade partner in 2009 and said governments had to help by ensuring the rule of law was upheld and by tackling corruption, two issues often cited by businesses as major obstacles. Africa is on the move. Africa is one of the fastest growing regions of the world. People are being lifted out of poverty, incomes are up, the middle class is growing. And young people like you are harnessing technology to change the way Africa is doing business. Entrepreneurship offers a positive alternative to the ideologies of violence and division. They can all too often fill the void when young people don't see a future for themselves. It is the time for a new generation of Africans to promote inclusive prosperity. In our pursuit of this prosperity, we have truly embraced the private sector. FIFA unveiled the match schedule for the 2018 World Cup in Russia, one day ahead of the qualification draws for the competition. The 2018 World Cup will be held in 12 stadiums across 11 host cities in Russia. Luskny Stadium in Moscow will host the opening game that will include the hosts Russia along with the semi-final and the final. St. Petersburg will host the other semi-final and the schedule for the 2017 Confederation Cup will also be unveiled. 
St. Petersburg will host the Confederations Cup final on July 2nd, 2017. American R&B singer Chris Brown finally made it to perform in Macau late on Friday night after his unsmooth departure from the Philippines because of a fraud complaint filed against him. The 26-year-old Grammy Award winner did not disappoint his waiting fans in Macau after he missed the shows in a party club in Hong Kong scheduled on Wednesday night. The show was three hours delayed. Party goers packed in the club cheered when they see Chris Brown singing and dancing up on stage. His next show will be scheduled on next Monday in Israel, and he makes it to Beirut on July 29th. Speaking of concerts, Comedy Man and The Tonight Show host Jimmy Fallon joined U2 on their latest Innocence Experience tour and performed the song Desire with Bono on stage. Check this out. I want to bring somebody else up if I can. Is anyone who can play guitar, something sing, whatever? There's a singer with a broken finger. Let's try the singer with a broken finger. Come on up. He says, singer with broken finger. What do you want to play? What's your name? Uh, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Wow. Okay. What do you, uh, what do you think you can do, Jimmy? Keep your camera lady. It's a very important job. We've got a guy called Jimmy Fallon here. <laughs> so... I, I, honestly, I'm a big fan of music, and I'm a big fan of Irish people that fall down and hurt themselves. <laughs> so you're like a mentor to me, brother. I love you. And you're pretty good at it yourself. <laughs> and Edge, what you did a couple weeks ago, falling off the stage, was classic, brother. That was. I'm happy to be part of the club. I'm just so lucky and honored to be here in the greatest venue in the world, with the greatest band in the world, in the greatest city in the world. I'm very lucky. Thank you. Thank you. Really? Officials are still trying to secure a deal with a private company to remove the mounds of waste covering Beirut, according to Mayor Bilal Hamad. The Turkish military carries out a second wave of strikes against ISIS in Syria and embarks on a new air campaign to bombard camps of Kurdish militants in Iraq. U.S. President Barack Obama tells African entrepreneurs in Nairobi they could help counter violent ideologies and drive growth in Africa. Have a great weekend ahead from all of us here at Future and stay safe and keep cool. طريق القدس يمر بالقلمون وبالزبداني وبحمص طريق فلسطين لا ما بتمر بالزبداني ودمشق